Let's pray. Almighty God, our Father, Jesus, Son of God, Holy Spirit of infinite power, all praise, glory, and honor to our Sovereign of all creation. You are worthy to be worshipped, venerated, and obeyed by all men, and especially by those who have chosen your Son as Lord and Savior. This congregation has gathered for fellowship with kindred spirits, for instruction in righteousness, and to be strengthened by the infallible word. In times like these, Lord God, we need your love. We need a clear understanding of your will. And we need spiritual discernment, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This seems apparent when bullets end disputes, when rage and anger destroy relationships, when innocents die from neglect, when poor choices lead to total depravity. Your word, dear Father, describes our former estate. The heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? We have found the answer. Jesus can understand our hearts. He was tested in every way known to man that would turn our allegiance away from God to worship other gods, self, money, and power. By the power of the Holy Spirit, ministering through the perfect word of God, we are overcomers. Amen. We do not have to live by bread alone. The word sustains our spirits. We trust the word for our safety. We worship a risen Lord and Savior, turning our back on temporal, material, and perishable things of this world. Like Abraham who took who look like Abraham, we look for a home not built with hands. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings we receive by our relationship with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. By that love connection, we share what we have learned the varied ministries of this church touch our community, our mission connections, and into other lands. And we begin with prayer. By faith, we pray for the healing of every needy person, body, soul, and spirit. By faith, we believe that prayers are answered when we ask in the will of God. From God's heart of love, he answers in our best interest. We pray for all who may be afflicted by severe weather, for those in war zones, for those oppressed and in harm's way, that the mighty hand of God would prevail against evil. Praise the name of God forever. Whatever special needs or burdens are on your hearts, let's take them in the next few moments and bring them to God through our mediator, Jesus the Christ, who hears, loves, and responds. In a spirit of love and unity, dear Father, we prepare our hearts and minds to receive words of truth and wisdom prayerfully presented by our pastor, Eddie Fulford, for our edification. We ask all this in the beautiful name of Jesus.
Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Please rise for the reading of his holy word. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you were the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the God, Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
all say, wow. wow. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus all over the place. Choir, Corey, Cindy, amazing grace. Oh, my. Now, I felt led to go into this passage because I want to study Matthew. I want to hear Jesus. I want this to be the year of the Bible for us even right here at Dunellen. Now, we probably won't get very far through the Bible uh, the way that I preach. You know, I just kind of focus sometimes just on one verse. But I do want to stay in Matthew for a season to hear the words of Jesus. And the passage I'm looking at today is the story of the temptations. We usually save that. Uh, as we get closer to Lent, Ash Wednesday, and then into the Lenten season. But I wanted to start it today since we were at the baptism of the Lord. And you cannot separate the baptism of the Lord Sunday, as we lifted up last week, if you were here, with the temptations. They come together. Miss Bonnie gave a tremendous in-depth message at the 930 service. I am always so blessed by our certified lay ministers, our retired ministers that bless us. And those messages go online. And so you can pick that up, and I would encourage you to listen. Bonnie did incredible research and just absolutely fantastic. And she got tired of me giving her the accolades at the last service, but I, I really mean that. And I, wanna, I told her, I said, I want to listen to that again because she covered a lot of basic facts regarding the temptations of Christ relating that to the Old Testament and to us today. Now, where the Lord is leading me to share with you at 11 o'clock this morning I first of all remember a book that was very popular in my seminary when I attended in the early 80s uh, because we were followers of a gentleman by the name of Richard Foster and uh, we were talking about the spiritual disciplines. Dallas Willard was a part of that group as well and just amazing authors and teachers and some would come to the seminary and speak to us and Richard Foster wrote another book at that time about temptations and he titled the book Money sex and power. And he said, these are the three biggest temptations that we have in life for us. Now, these are not the same exact temptations that we see in the scriptures that Steve read to us a few moments ago, but they fall under a mass description of the old devil tempting us at our Achilles heel. And so we need to be aware of that. Even though the devil is not all powerful, he does have a concept of our Achilles heel and he knows how to attack us with those temptations. I still at times am tempted throughout the week driving down the highway and my car wants to turn into Kentucky Fried Chicken every single day. But I know that's not a good thing. I spoke to the men at the men's retreat about how that I've turned that into a humorous concept Concept, but really having a certain time during the week that I eat the fried chicken has saved me from overindulging throughout the week because it is an Achilles heel for me. Now that may not sound like murder or adultery or something like that, but that could very well put your pastor in an early grave. I want you to understand that. So all temptations can hurt us and we've got to hear from God what God's Word says about facing those temptations. You agree? Say amen. amen. The A of our ABCs. I'm going to talk about all three, but I'm going to begin with the last one for my understanding today. Jesus, as he's being attacked, remember he is hungry. He has fasted. He was baptized. If you were here last week, I shared about how to me that symbolically connected him with us and symbolically teaches not only connection, but submission. And the Bible says all of us have sinned. All of us struggle with temptation, but Jesus being tempted just like us did not fall to that temptation. I said last week, therefore he was able to be the perfect lamb of God that died for our sins, chose to die for our sins, the perfect sacrifice to give himself, and we are redeemed. We are filled with his love. We're filled with his kindness and his grace and his mercy and truth. But that doesn't mean he wasn't tempted because he was in human form. And so the Achilles heel because of the word of God, even the Old Testament, and that's where Bonnie is so good in her message, he began to attack the devil in certain areas there. So I take you to the third temptation. He is placed on a high mountain and the old devil's very clear in the concept, you know, making it 
clear to Jesus, I'm the prince of the air, I'll use my verbiage if you don't mind, and I have the right to give you this world. This is my world. I'm going to give it to you if you'll just bow down and worship me. Of course, you remember that Jesus, after every temptation, he quoted scripture back to the old devil. And as we've said in all the services today, that if Jesus needed to quote scripture, what does that say to you and me? We need to be in the word. We need to have some verses ready when the old devil comes to us. Remember in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, 15, it says very clearly, of 10 verse 13, excuse me, it says very clearly that there is no temptation come upon us But that which is common to man, of course, but with the temptation that comes to us, God always provides a way out. So it's not fair to say to God, well, I just can't help it. It's just me. That's what we hear so many times. It's just me. Baloney. God says in his word, he has given you a way to resist that temptation and to have victory. Jesus said to the old devil, of course, when he said, worship me, he quoted scripture and said, you shall worship the Lord thy God only. Please understand that in the transition year that we are facing, we have to make a choice. And I believe I know what your choice, your answer is already, but we have to make a choice. Is Jesus Christ, the Jesus, our understanding of the Bible, is he and he alone, he and he alone, the Son of God, the Trinity, no other way to heaven but Jesus, you see. There's a lot on the table here, friends. And we're going to see that unfold over the next couple of years, not just in the Methodist denomination, but in all the denominations. So Jesus makes it clear in this passage, at least, that you are to worship God and God alone. But at the end of that, he says, be away with me, Satan. Get away from me. Now, that'll be the A of our ABCs today. That Jesus that said to Satan with authority, be away from me, lives in your heart. If you love the Lord, if you've asked the Lord to come into your heart, prayer that Don gave just a little while ago, if that soul-searching moment has been in your life and you've asked Jesus to take charge of your life, if he's there, you have that Jesus and you have the right to say to the old devil, be away from me. And I encourage you to take that opportunity, to take that authority and get rid of the devil that is pestering you and driving you bananas. Say amen with me if you agree. Now, I know you've all put up with me over the years how much I love the old Rocky movies. You know, I've, I've talked about them a million times, so I'm going to do it again for just a moment because something came to me. I remember one of the scenes in one of the Rocky movies, and if you're not familiar, uh, again, it's the idea of the boxer and the idea that he's facing a mountain. It's kind of like the David and Goliath story, and, uh, but he's winning, and it's just amazing. But then his wife, who loves him very much, she uh, has her baby complications. She's in a coma. So he just postpones working out. She doesn't really want him to fight. So he's reconsidering what he needs to do, you know, and, and just praying. She's right there with her, which is where he needs to be. But she wakes up in the movie. And when she wakes up and they're cheering on their little baby and they're just so happy. And he tells her, he said, you know, he said, if you really don't want me to fight, he said, I, you know, because life, the reality of life is hitting. He said, I'll, I'll do something else. And she pulls him close, close to herself. And she looks up at him and she whispers. And he doesn't understand it to begin with, but she gets him closer and she says, win, win. And that's when the music starts. Da da da, da da da. I know we've heard that a million times on the radio or on TV or whatever it may be. And I just love it, love it, love it, love it. Dear friends, I know that we live in a day and age, and I agree with it. You know, when you're looking at little ones many times, you say it's not whether you win or lose, right? It's how you play the game, the journey of your life. That's, tr- that's a true concept. But in the spiritual warfare, it's okay to win. In the spiritual battles of life, It's okay to have authority and power over the enemy. It's okay to say, I know the end of the story, and we win. Can you say amen? Give the Lord a clap offering. Amen with me? That wasn't a real hearty clap offering, huh? (laughs) The B of the ABCs would be the temptation, which is the first now. Turn these stones into bread. Now, if you think about that for a minute, and I'm going to be just kind of very obvious with that. Jesus is hungry, but the old devil is trying to feed him. 
and we are not to receive food from the devil. Now, I know Brother Don has been to the Holy Land. Some of the rest of you have as well. I've not been there myself, but one of my dear friends, pastor friends, years ago told me that there was an area there where they believed the temptation may have taken place, Don, and they said the stones actually look like loaves of bread. I thought that was fascinating. So you can see Satan and his craftiness working at that. Now, Jesus is God. Is it wrong to eat? You know, and, and Bonnie compared this to the idea that, you know, it's confusing if you think about it. And this is where the devil uses a deception. God doesn't desire you to be hurting, right? I mean, God desires if it's, if it's something good that he's created, you know, even going all the way back to the first sin, the, the tree of of, of knowledge of, of good and evil that they stayed away from, and then the tree of, that they were not to eat from from the very beginning. But yet it's good, right? It smells good. It looks good. Why would God give you something good if he doesn't want you to, to eat it? it? That's that same temptation. It's that same concept. But the reality is you're not to follow the devil. You're not to follow the devil. The devil wants to give you the easy way out. Sometimes God requires sacrifice. Sometimes God requires that we suffer, now, we don't like that. We say, that can't be God. Yes, it is God. Many times it is God in the Bible. You see, your personal glory, your personal physical attributes are nothing compared to your spiritual attributes, your spiritual growth that God has given to you. And that far outweighs the physical response and the needs of the body, even though the body should be taken care of. But when you have to weigh them in the balance, you don't take the food of the devil. And that's where Jesus rebukes him as well. The God that we love tells us to repent of our sins, to repent of our sins and draw close to Jesus Christ. Not just to turn away from sin, but to turn to Jesus Christ. We have to know that there's an eternity in front of us that can be scary for some. There is a real hell out there, the Bible says. Do you believe that? If you're going to fall on the traditional side of the world, of the world, we believe there's a hell because the Bible says there's a literal hell. And Jesus said, let me tell you who you need to fear. Jesus said this, Matthew 10, 28, fear the one who can destroy your body and soul in hell. Jesus said that. This is our loving Jesus said that, warning us. Hell was not made for us. It was made for the demons that fell so long ago, according to our understanding of the scriptures. You're not supposed to be there. You're not wanting to be there. God doesn't want you to be there. Everyone that calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be saved. But we have to see that in eternity. Why do I believe that? Because the Bible tells me so. Now, I can change my understanding of that of the Bible. I can say that that's, that was, it's just not relative today. I can just say that, you know, I think that maybe the scholars interpreted that wrong. I can say that maybe the church wrote that in. Jesus never said it, but I believe, because it's in the Word, that Jesus said it. Let me say that humorously, if you don't mind for a minute. If it's written in red, Jesus really said it. Amen? If it's written in red, Jesus really said it. Now, C, the, a of, the C of the ABCs today, and this is, I like this, and if you've heard me preach on this passage before, I've used this. Satan took Jesus to church, took him to the temple, took him to church. You believe the old devil's around here, around the church? I pray every Saturday night that God will put two angels at the door up there, the gate coming in when you drive in. And for Wednesdays, for the, because we have the midweek Wednesday worship service. I know we have meetings all through the week, but for those two, I pray that the angels, and what my prayer is, that they will block any negative thought, any negative action. I don't want them blocking sinners from coming in, or I couldn't get in here. You know, I don't want God to stop people from coming in, but I want him to work on the sinfulness of us before we even come in. The devil is alive and well. How in the world can that be? You know, how can that be? You know, but I read these stories in the Bible and I go back to 2 Kings chapter 5. There's an amazing story of a great prophet and the prophet's assistant turns to the devil. And I have wrestled with that 
my whole life. And, and if you get a chance, you ought to read that. 2 Kings chapter 5. How can that happen? How can that happen? That man was in church every Sunday, if I can say it that way. How could that happen? Friends, we're humans. We, we have a nature. We, we need to be filled with the Spirit. There's no doubt about that. That's our justification. And we need to have sanctification. We need to be set apart, but we're in a journey. And even the Apostle Paul himself said in Romans, he said, I want to do what's right, but I end up many times doing what's wrong. What hope is there for me? Thank God for Jesus Christ. Without him, we can't do anything whatsoever. And he loves us and he cares for us. And friends, he doesn't just, he doesn't just die for us. He wants to be our Lord. I love the way a fellow came to my daddy's church many years ago and preached one time the prodigal son story. Do you remember that? The prodigal son story. You know, that was a son. Think of this now. It's prodigal, but it's prodigal son. But he comes home, and the father wraps his arms around him. We know that story well, you know. But it doesn't end there. And I love that way that preacher said. He said he hugged his son. He gave him a new robe, put a new ring on his fingers. And then he went, you need to take a bath, boy. (laughs) God loves you so much, he wants you to take a bath. And for us as a church to not offer people a way to clean up their act is a sin, is a terrible sin. And I see that happening around the globe. I see that happening. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's not being judgmental. That's being loving. That's being loving. Opportunities, ways to resist, to abstain from sin and get clean in the presence of God. For when you are in in that process, you know what a good shower feels like. You know how wonderful that feels. If you've ever had to take a cold shower and when you get the opportunity to take a nice hot bath or a hot shower, you know how wonderful that feels. Dear friends, God wants to give that wonderful feeling to those that don't even know they're in sin. They don't even know they're lost in sin. We have to call sin, sin, and so then we have to sin say we love you and we love you in your sin but we want you to get cleaned up I'm not judging you I'm a sinner too but I have got a plan here that you can come and join with me as I work on my sin you work on yours and God will do the rest can we say amen but you call it sin you call it sin if it's sin call it sin don't call it what it is call it what it is that's that's a divisive issue I know we live in a day and age in the church uh, where we're trying so hard to be ecumenical, which is a wonderful thing, to reach out to people that have different thoughts and ideas. We're trying to be very pluralistic, which is a wonderful thing. We're, We're trying to just share with everyone the love of Jesus Christ. But when it comes to the only way of salvation, Jesus made it very clear, very clear, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is no other way except by me. I mean, you either believe it or not. I loved a song that came out in the 70s. I know you're way too young to remember back then. But it said that he's either Lord or he's a liar or he's a lunatic. Which is he? Don't try to blend it. He's one, or the, he's one of those three. Who is he to you? We find our Jesus in the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. Does that mean I'm going to understand it exactly like you? No. And you're not going to understand it exactly like me. Does that mean we can't stay at the same table? No, we can't. But there are certain specifics in that Bible that we can agree on. The ancient creeds, the Apostle Creed, the Nicene Creed are specific specific. This is what we believe as the church of Jesus Christ. Now I have a challenge for you this morning and for this week. Every week we've talked about having a challenge to serve our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Peter, 1 Peter 2, 9, that you are a chosen generation. You are a holy nation. You are a people called out of darkness, I shared this last week, to go into light. But there's a reason, and I left that alone last week, 
of being called out of darkness into light. Not just to enter in, not just to enter in by yourself, but you are called, if you read that whole verse, to proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into light. I challenge you this week to proclaim, to praise his holy name, to do the next right thing. And that's what it is. As you're facing your struggles and temptations, look beyond the temptations and praise the Lord in the midst of them. Praise God in the midst of them. Do the next right best thing. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. If he resides in your heart, you ask and you shall receive, dear friends. He will speak directly to you and guide you. Guide you. This next week is going to be colder in Florida than it was last week. Now, we had a wonderful week. Somebody say amen. Weather was beautiful, wasn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely wonderful. But this week's going to be cold. And somebody at the store, checkout counter, the elevator, walking with you on the golf course, in the mall, somebody's going to say, I can't believe how cold it is. And your normal reaction is, I know this is terrible, isn't it? But this is not the reason I came to Florida. And we've just had this amazing week. I challenge you this week when they say that, that your response is, praise the Lord. (laughs) Now, they may slap you in the face for that, you know, but you need to have an answer for that. Praise the Lord. Why are you praising the Lord for this? Think about the week we just had. Give God the glory. Give him praise. You've been called out of darkness. You've been called out of the north. Come down here to this sunny weather down here in Florida. And even though it's cold, it's not as cold as where some of you are from. I've looked at those temperatures. How in the world did y'all survive all those years in that cold? My goodness gracious. Florida is a beautiful place. We know that. We have our struggles too. But it's beautiful. We have no right to complain. I challenge you and see if the Lord doesn't open up when they say, why are you praising the Lord? And maybe you can even share about your faith. Maybe you can share about Jesus. Maybe you can just share something and get excited about the things of God. Get busy about the things of God. And maybe you won't have time to fall to the temptations. Get into the word of God and claim those promises so that when you're facing your temptation, Those verses will come back to your mind and you'll be able to claim them. You can't claim something if you don't remember it. If you haven't heard it, get into the Word of God. Let this be the year of the Bible. And all of God's people said, Lord Jesus, we love you so much. Guide us now as we come to the close of this worship service. What a beautiful service. I felt the Lord so much as Brother Don was praying. Felt the Lord so much the choir. Oh my goodness. Felt the Lord as Brother Steve gave us that dramatic presentation of reading the scriptures. I praise the Lord for the last hour here in the in-depth study that Miss Bonnie gave to us. Lord, there's just something about this place. Don mentioned that in prayer, dear Lord, that the Holy Spirit's all over this place. All over this place. Does that mean, Lord, we're not going to have problems? No, 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 no. Probably going to have more problems. More problems. Life doesn't make sense. You need to be in prayer for Barbara Leventino. Barbara covers our office, volunteer Monday and Tuesdays now. Many of you know Barbara. She comes to this service. Barbara's granddaughter's dying, 30 years old. She's on a ventilator. Barbara flew up Saturday to Connecticut just praying that she gets there in time to touch her before she dies. That's not right. That's not right, 30-year-old to die. That's not right. The funeral we had a week ago, Alex, 19. That's not right. We love the Lord. Does that mean we're shielded from the bad things of this world? No, it doesn't mean that at all. But what it does mean is there's an inner peace, an inner direction, an inner Holy Spirit that tells us it will be okay. And it's actually okay right now, but you just don't know it. But that's okay, because I love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Let's all rise together. The altar is open as always. Brother Corey will lead us in our last hymn. Closing hymn for today is number 534. We will do verses 1 and 3. But in light of what Pastor just said, think about these words as you sing them. <laughs>